Science and technology is sort of the, the next step, I guess, of the human development. I mean, it's always been there, but it's now a more computerised sort of living in a... Uh, I guess we've gone through our industrial revolution and now we're into our information revolution, which is sort of a very computerised. Merging the two, to me, is really about an acceptance of another medium. And it's about... I think it's not so much that it focuses on that these works, you know, use science and that's really just really important because they're scientific exploration tools or something like that, so therefore they're art. It's not science fiction in that sense. It's more <coughs> that um, it's another medium and it's an interesting medium and that it can be used, like painting, to create, you know, these kind of viewpoints of what life is about and technology plays such an important role in our lives I don't see how artists can't you know use it. One of the interesting things about science and art now or technology and art I suppose is whether or not digital art is being perceived as real art. Um, personally I am continually confronted with uh, problems in showing my digital work, my technological work, in an art gallery situation, for example. What do we do with the leads? How do you uh, keep everything so straight? Uh, how do you hang it on a wall? I think scientific knowledge can be used by an artist if they're working in a medium or with things which science best understands, as opposed to everyday human understanding. The subject matters investigated by science uh, can certainly be a topic for art. I think science fiction is your ultimate art-science hybrid. What I wanted to do with this collaboration was take art, sound and physics and treat them on an equal level. One of the most important aspects of this work was defining the space, breaking it up through beams of sound. This is where the audience creates their own composition by walking through the beams. This project is about the lens, it's continuing processes in the lens that I've been looking at. It's the last few years, I think it's been light lenses, it's been a way that, that light um, <clears throat> passes through the lens and relating that to the human processes, or the, to, to processes in the mind. We're going to be working with a musician on this piece, and we're going to try and compose a piece of music I guess, but also be working um, abstractly in the night, just working intuitively on whatever we come up with. <clears throat> um, and we'll be making new trajectories within the room, treating the sound as something that's quite physical. Surveillance technology is used in every aspect of our lives, such as telephone tapping and street surveillance cameras. The satellite dish recordings were twofold. One was to highlight through performance the use and abuse of surveillance, and two, to capture voyeuristic sounds such as people's conversations or subtle sounds that signified a human presence. Getting these these drawings from paper to to actually making the structures, they might be different once they're built. Really, it's because once they get down to the, what holds, you know, that amount of steel, it's completely different than what I've drawn on on the, on the paper. 
page. It's really just it's almost an aesthetical play of you know that angle has to go there because otherwise it'll, it'll look really weird and funny. Usually I find that if I draw something that's aesthetic for that shape, it's it usually holds a weight really well anyway. So form follows function. In the process of creating new work, I found myself heading into areas of expertise that needed a catalyst of information and skills. Professor John Mainstone from the University of Queensland Physics Department helped me understand key scientific principles which became essential elements in understanding how to focus sound. To physically create this work, I created a mould from fibreglass similar to that of fibreglass boat moulds. Using the original satellite dish as the other half of the sandwich mould, the toxic resin was carefully measured out, then colour and catalyst added to create a batch. Once this was complete, resin was simply poured into the mould and allowed to set overnight. In between making the lenses, I worked on creating the structures to hold the lenses together. These structures were based on designs for cranes and other weight-bearing wireframe structures. To allow for movement, I used bicycle parts, as they were readily accessible and have Duchamp qualities attributed to them. In the welding of the installation, I made the structures different heights to allow for different trajectories of sound. Once all the welding was completed for the structures and the resin had been poured for the lenses, I simply put the two together and then worked on finishing touches. Alright, it's come time for installation of the work. This is the point that usually comes the time where it's, you know, a hectic, sleepless nights of putting things together, but I've tried to make things as simple as possible by making it like Lego. So I've got the works which are just behind me here what should just bolt together and I only need a few spanners and um, I can go home early. Okay, I've finished most of my setup of everything that needs to bolt together. The only thing left to do now is to bolt on a few speakers and bring in the computer and work on the sound, move things around a bit and um, probably board up the windows as well to um, set up all the lighting. I've been involved in this project, creating sounds that are projected through the dishes um, and performing with the dishes as uh, fellow instruments and designing their um, their own instrumental voices which respond to my own trouble. So um, in designing them and in placing them in the space I think um, we've created uh, very unique voices for each of the dishes and as uh, the trombone itself being in the space with these dishes is another unique voice and that idea that they, they're communicating was really important that there was some kind of um, dialogue between each dish and I think having the unique personalities of each of them made that, one, that, made that aspect um, clearer. Very whimsical. Um, as you moved around, things changed, uh, and you got very distinct pictures in your mind. Um, the actual art uh, objects themselves were very interesting. Um, I don't know; it's something you can't put your finger on, and that's what makes it so interesting. I think I mainly enjoyed it for its mood, its atmosphere. Uh, to, to use electronics and get such a sort of uh, ambience and, and an analog sort of sound across, I think was great. And. Uh, there was also a certain, certain quiet up there and uh, attention to detail. I don't know, it was really good, really good work. I enjoyed it. It was, it was more observing people in the space rather than observing those, the, 
those objects. Alright, I'm back in the studio after the first part of the project has come to a completion. Um, it's given me a chance to really look at the way in which the acoustic lenses were working within a room and also how they worked within a room once there was an audience and how I can change that for the second part of the project. Um, it's basically made up of, this is just a small sample of this type of lens. Um, eventually there will be about 10 layers of this lattice and each one will be concentric and getting smaller. So if you were to see it on its side it would look by convex like a real light lens. But what it actually does to the sound it is that the discs are spaced in such a way that they're not too small that the sound passes just through them and they're not too big that they just they get reflected and so what happens is there's some kind of weird dipole radiator effect happening there so that it causes the sound to converge on the other side. This is the second part of the project. The lens is hooked up to a motion detector and the speaker is outside the window to create the right kind of distance between the lens. It's not until people walk around the back of the lens that the motion detector triggers the motor and sound, creating an element of surprise. The motor is from a photocopier and it's attached to an aluminium and stainless steel tripod. The outcome of this lens resulted in it focusing only a certain range of frequencies. It's taken me months to engineer this thing. The exciting thing about this project coming to a completion is the skills that I've acquired and how that relates to furthering new work. I'm really excited about being able to apply the skills I've learnt into new work and also being able to work more closely with scientific departments so that um, not just sound with the acoustic lens project but um, other aspects of the unseen physical world and learning how to manipulate those and create them into artworks for people to experience. Ships and the sea, the lake, 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 and the sea, the l